Finally, the bread and butter is back with the SPFL resuming after the international break. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Football for the SPFL preview show. Normally, the international break has been good for us, being fans of Scotland. However, three defeats in a row for the national team. Let's just put the brakes on right there. Name it international football. Let's just wait to the Euros. We can go and win that. But for now, I'm sick of playing all these top seeded teams, all these top tier teams. Let's just go back to playing the likes of Cyprus, Georgia, and then when we get to the Euros, then we'll beat the big boys. We don't want to show the likes of France what we have. We laid down to France because we're going to attack them. We're not going to show them our game plan. When we get them in Germany, that is when we will bring our A game, or at least that's what I'm going to tell myself. So yeah, enough about Scotland, guys. Well, enough about Scotland from an international standpoint. Let's talk about club level. We're here to look at the leagues. We're here to look at the fixtures. Give our predictions. And uh, yeah, see what we have in store for Scottish football. Now, obviously, quite a lot has changed. Now, it might not feel like that. And maybe the fact that happened during an international break has, you know, put a little bit of a, a dampener on it. But Rangers have a new manager. Yes, they do. Philippe Clement has become the new Rangers boss, signing a three-and-a-half-year deal. So, it's going to be his first game in charge this week. And it's not going to be an easy one taking on Hibernian, who are doing really well since appointing... Their new manager, um, was it Nick Montgomery? I think it's Nick Montgomery, isn't it? Yes, that's the one. Nick Montgomery. So I'm, I'm expecting a, a tough game there, and I wouldn't be surprised if Hibs win, but I think Rangers will get a manager bounce too. Look, we'll talk more about that when we get to it first. Let's have a look at League 2. Again, pretty closely contested. Peterhead do lead the way at the moment, but I, I could see any team putting a good run here and, and making at least the playoffs, although Elgin City at the moment are kind of struggling and it is interesting to see the different contrast between Peterhead and Clyde both teams got relegated last season from League One I believe Peterhead actually finished bottom so they finished below Clyde yet they're looking good they're looking like they could be getting a possible return to League One whereas Clyde looked like they could be falling out of the Scottish pyramid so it's, it's interesting to see the two different tales there from the relegation side. But let's go through our predictions then. So I'm going to go with a Bonnie Reg Rose. I'm going to go 2 1 Bonnie Reg Rose. I'll go 2 1 Strenrar. I'm going to go 1 1 Elgin City for far. I'm going to go with Peterhead to lose. I know they're top of the table, but I'm going to give Stenhouse Muir benefit there. I'm going to go 2 1 Stenhouse Muir, and I will go with a 2 2 draw between the Spartans and Dumb Barton. So there you go, guys. That is my predictions for League 2. Moving into League 1, Falkirk lead the way, but only on goal difference after that draw with Hamilton. So I think it's clearly obvious now that we are going to get a straight shootout between Falkirk and Hamilton for top spot, who is going to automatically go up to the championship and who is going to have to earn their way through the playoffs. That remains to be seen. But what we do know is that Marvin Bartley, I always mention him, but it is true, he's coming under a lot of pressure at Queen of the South. I believe he had three wins after five games. But he's lost his last four in a row. So something needs to happen there for Queen. No, wait, I think it was... There's not three wins after four games. I think it was three after four. So he's lost his last five in a row. Even worse, Marvin Bartley, he needs to do something. He, he honestly, he needs to turn it around. And he, he needs to do it soon. Because, I mean, that just doesn't look good when you when you consider the, uh, the, the stats there. No, it's not. I mean, he's had five home appearances this season. And he's lost four of them. Not good enough. For Queen of the South, not good enough for Marvin Bartley. Edinburgh City at the moment, pretty desperate. They need to get something on the board. They need to get a win sooner rather than later. Will it come this weekend? I don't know. Let's go look at the fixtures. So, uh, Aloha versus Kelty Hearts. So I'll go with an Aloha win. I'll go Aloha 2, Kelty Hearts 1. Annan versus Queen of the South. I'm going to go with Marvin Bartley, turn it around. I'm going to go a Queen of the South 3 2 victory this week. Cove Rangers versus Montrose. I will go, I mean, Montrose are doing pretty well. But I'm going to go 1-0 Montrose. I'm just going to give it to Montrose. I think they might edge it. Hamilton versus Edinburgh City. Edinburgh City need to get some points on the board. I don't see them doing it against high-flying Hamilton. I really don't. I'm going to go Hamilton 3, Edinburgh City 0. And I'm going to go Sterling Albion 1, Falkirk 2. I believe both Hamilton and Falkirk will continue to battle it out at the top of the table. Both teams picking up wins. Moving into the Championship now, you can see Dundee United are currently top. Although, there have been 
closely followed by Rafe Rovers. Both teams still unbeaten at home. Dundee unbeaten just in general across the board. Haven't lost a game yet. And they've only conceded four goals, including one just away from home. So Dundee United... Very good record at the moment, home and away. And you look at the goal difference, I mean, they, they are the superior team. There is no doubt about that. And with the squad and the budget they have, I mean, Jim Goodwin really should be walking the championship. Now, I did predict, I have nothing against Jim Goodwin. I think he, he'll be. I think he'll do a good job for Dundee United, but I did predict Partick Thistle to win the championship. And it could still happen. I'm not saying it won't. But yeah, at the moment, the trail by four points. Uh... I would change my mind. I would say I believe Dundee will United will go on and win it now, but I still I stayed uh, I said Partick Thistle, so I'll stick by them. I mean, we'll see what happens come the end of the season. At the bottom of the table, Inverness were not looking good, but after bringing in Big Duncan Ferguson, it's, it's beginning to look a lot better. And Greenick Morton, who won the first game of the season, guys, have lost seven. Uh, well, not seven in a row, but they haven't won in their last seven, and that's poor. That is very poor. Surely Dougie Emery is coming under pressure there and both teams in danger of being cut adrift from the, the rest of the pack. So I think Inverness and Caledonia... Well, Inverness, they've, they've done well lately. You know, they've picked up points. But Greenick Morton, I think they seriously need to get a bit of momentum going their way. Can they get it this week? Well, on the Friday night game, it's Airdrie versus Queen's Park. That game is on BBC. I think it's BBC Alba, or it might just be BBC Normal, BBC Scotland, who knows. I'm going to go with Airdrie. I'm going to get Airdrie benefit there. I'm going to go 2-1 Airdrie. Uh, Arbroath versus Rafe Rovers. I'm going to go with... I'll go with 1-1. I'm going to go 1-1 in that game. Dunfermline, Air United. I'm going to go with 2-1 Dunfermline. Greenick Morton versus Inverness, Cali Wild. So the, the battle of the two bottom teams and... Both teams here have a chance to open up a three-point lead on the other. You know what? I'm going to go with Inverness, Caledonian Fistle. I'm going to go Greenick Morton 1, Inverness 2. I'm going to give Inverness the edge. And then Partick Fistle versus Dundee United. Massive game towards the top of the table. Partick Fistle win. The gap between them is one point. Dundee United win. The gap is seven points. I'm going to go with Partick Fistle to inflict the first defeat on Dundee United this season. I'm going to go Partick Fistle 2, Dundee United 1. I've said 2-1 a lot so far in this video, but there's no point me just going with a different scoreline if I don't think it's going to be it. I'm going to go with 2-1. I don't want to be repetitive, but fuck it, 2-1, guys. Let's move in then to the Premiership. And then if you're a Celtic fan, then this league table probably looks great. If you support anyone else other than, I would say, what, St Mirren maybe? Possibly Mullerwell and Livingston. Okay, there's a couple of teams that are doing all right. But, I mean, if you're, if you're a Rangers fan, you probably want to kill yourself looking at this. If you're a Hearts fan, you're thinking, we've had an easy run to the season and we've only got 11 points. We've got the Edinburgh Derby. Uh, followed by Celtic and Rangers coming up. So we'll... Oh, no, we've just had the Edinburgh Derby. My bad. We've still got Celtic and Rangers coming up on a double header. So you're probably thinking, yeah, we're screwed. Um, Hibs and Aberdeen, you're thinking, you know, bottom six. This is shit. Kilmarnock, after a good start this season, you're probably thinking, how the hell are we down here? And St. Johnston, if I was a St. Johnston fan, I'd be thinking, I wonder what price our championship season ticket is next year. But, yeah, let's have a look then at the matches. And, I mean, it's massive games for some teams this week. So, Kilmarnock, Levy. Uh, I'm going to go with Kilmarnock to win this one by two goals to one. Livingston, obviously, have a much better home record than they do away. Although, I believe this season they haven't lost to anybody that is not from Glasgow. So, Livingston are doing well, but I think Kilmarnock... I think Kilmarnock need a win. I think Derek McKins needs a win just to try and get a bit of momentum going because Kilmarnock's played okay this season. They've had some really good results against the old firm sides, but just based on the league table, you know, they have been unlucky. They've drew some games that they should have won and you would just expect them to be higher based on, you know, the so-called good start they had to the season. So I am going to go with Kilmarnock to defeat Livingston by two goals to one. Uh, Ibrox up next. Rangers versus Hibernian. Massive game here. Who is going to be victorious? Will it be Rangers? Will it be Hibernian? Is Philippe Clemon's first game in charge? Is it going to take him a while to get up and running? Are Rangers going to hit the ground running? Are they going to get the new manager bounce? We don't know. We don't know. What we do know is Hibs are playing pretty good football. Attacking-wise, Hibs are a threat. And, I mean, Rangers defensively don't seem to be the greatest, although they do have Jack Butland, who is probably been the best player for them this season. And I think it's always a little bit of a worry. If your goalkeeper's a standout player, especially for a top side, then it's not great. You know, for your goalkeeper 
to be the standout player normally means that yes he he's had to save you quite a bit and that's not what Rangers would have wanted you know they want to be on the front foot they won't want Butland to be the the man of the match for them you know the less Butland does that means the better Rangers are doing so I'm going to go with three two Rangers I think they'll probably edge it but I just want to say if it's Hibs at edge I won't be surprised I, I think this could go either way it could be a draw as well maybe I should go a draw um, boy, God, you know, no, you know what? F Philippe Clement did have a good start to his career at Monaco, so maybe he'll have a good start to his career at Rangers. I'll go three two. I'll give Rangers a three two win. Ross County St Mirren. Do I see St Mirren continuing their good run? I hope so. It's good to see a team up there challenging, just like a team in the mix, and I, I think they will probably beat Ross County. I'm going to go St Mirren two, Ross County one. St Johnston, Mullerwell up next. St Johnston desperately need to get points on the board. Mullerwell, after losing four in a row, desperately need to stop the rot. And you know, Mullerwell are in danger of their season falling away. Now, don't get me wrong, Mullerwell, even if they lost this game, they're still in a pretty good position. But after such a strong start to the season, if they have five defeats in a row, then they really are going to go for a team that is pushing possibly to get that third spot to just a team that you know will be looking to try and sneak into the top six so uh, massive game for Mullerwell do I think they will beat St Johnston I actually do I just I think St Johnston are in big big trouble I'm going to go St Johnston 1 Mullerwell 2 and I know I said 2-1 or 1-2 a lot this video but I'm sticking with it guys I'm going St Johnston to lose by 2 goals to 1 Aberdeen at um uh, 6 o'clock kickoff I'm not sure why this is. Is there any... I don't know. Why have we got a late kickoff at Pataudry? I have no idea. Is it something to do with the storm? I know there was flooding in Aberdeen, but I don't think that would push it to a late kickoff. So, I mean, if someone can tell me why there's a late kickoff here in Aberdeen, then that'd be great. I know there was bad floods in Aberdeen, but I'm not too sure why it would postpone the kickoff to 6 o'clock. Must be... I don't know. I mean, Dun who else? Is what team's on here Aberdeen? I'm trying to think. I mean, Dundee, Dundee and Edward both away from home, so that shouldn't affect any. I don't know. I don't know why this happened at 6 o'clock. Anyway, I'm going to go with Aberdeen to win. I'm going to go 3-1 to the Dons. And then we move into Sunday, guys, where the greatest team in Scotland, Heart of Midlothian, take on Celtic. Well, I wish I could say that with a straight face. Hearts of Midlothian take on uh, Celtic here on the uh, the Sky Kick. I think it's a joke, though. Seriously, Philip Clement's first game in charge of Rangers and Sky couldn't fucking put the game on. And I get it. They, they only have four Rangers games. But, jeez, who cares? Break the fucking rules. It's the guy's first game in charge. Put the game on Sky. You dirty, stinking, robbing bastards, man. Put the game on Sky. What are they doing? What are they doing? I have no idea. That, that match should be on Sky. It should be on telly. I mean, it'll probably be available on Rangers TV, but... Who wants to pay twelve ninety nine for that shit? Anyway, uh, Hearts versus Celtic at Ten Castle. Can I see Hearts getting something here? You know what? I can. I think Celtic have been underperforming this season, and I think that Hearts are due a really good performance against the old firm. It's been a while since. I mean, last season we played okay against Celtic till we got Cochrane sent off. Then you know things just kind of went downhill for there. We had that 4-3 game. That was a cracking game that we should have at least got a point from. I think we should have won that game, but, I mean, had we got a point, I could have accepted it. To lose, it was tough. You know, we've played okay against Celtic in the last few times, but we haven't really been getting results against... It's been a few years, I think, if, if my memory corrects me, that we have, you know, got a win against any of the old form. I'm going to go... 2-2. Two, two. I'm going to go Hearts 2, Celtic 2. I think we'll get a draw against Celtic and I think we'll stop this mini run that Brendan Rodgers is on domestically. So, yeah, guys, that is it. That is my predictions then for the weekend. Hopefully, they come true. I'm looking forward to this weekend's action after the international break. And, I mean, I love Scotland, but I just don't really like to see us lose three games in a row. So, yeah, hopefully, club football gets back. Back with a bang. And um, let's just avoid some VAR decisions this week. I'm sick of VAR. I'm sick of these dodgy fucking refereeing decisions that are ruining fit. But I could accept mistakes back in the day. But now you've got VAR, you just expect everything to be perfect. And it's not. It's far from perfect. Far from perfect. Anyway, guys, that is it. Let us know your thoughts down below. We'll catch you in the next one. Till then, though, Beanfog Football. Thanks for watching and peace.